Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's part two of the Miss Tashira. Enjoy. From what you gathered in the meeting yesterday with Moichiro and the Master, this book was being held in a castle that was a day and a half away. You and Moichiro would be staying somewhere overnight and then completing the rest of the trip the next day. You followed behind Moichiro as he headed down the road towards the first village and sighed quietly to yourself. Oh, this would be so much better if we were at least talking along the way, you thought as your downcast gaze watched the rocks go by underfoot. Oh, you're still behind me. Moichiro suddenly said in a somewhat detached voice, and you looked up at him in surprise as he looked over his shoulder at you while you still walked. Yeah? You replied in confusion. Well, where did you think I was going to go? Um, I forgot you were there, he admitted, before looking back in front of him again. You deadpanned at his broad back as he continued to walk onwards. Great. Really? Thanks, you thought with a slight huff. You sighed and looked down at the ground, and then off to your left into the vast fields beside the road. In the distance, you could see farmers tending their crops, and suddenly realised how hungry you were. You looked towards the back of Moichiro again. Hey, when we get to the first village, could we get some lunch? I'm hungry, you said. Oh, I am too, he replied, placing one hand on his stomach. He hadn't realised it until you'd mentioned it. Okay, you nodded, happy that you'd at least be eating together. It was another half an hour before you got to the first village and you stopped at the closest ramen hut with the black curtains hanging from the doorframe, but only just hanging low enough to bop you on the top of the head as you entered. Hi, Moichiro called gently as he stepped in, raising one arm up to lift the black curtains out of the way so that he could enter, but he seemingly forgot that you were behind him and he let them fall back down just in time for them to graze your head and you had to duck a little in surprise and then scowled at him. He's forgotten I'm here again you thought with annoyance, and then spoke up as well. Hi, you called out. Moichiro turned and looked at you, blinking his eyes for a second. Oh, the colour Hashira, he said. You refrained from rolling your eyes, but man, you really wanted to. This guy was so flippin' dense. Yes, you said quite tersely. Then you turned to the man, presumably the owner of the place, and greeted him with a big smile. Hello, the man said brightly. Table for two? Yes, please, he said happily. I'm looking forward to some good food. Well, the man chuckled, rubbing his hands together with delight. I have all the good food here. What can I get for you? I'll have a big bowl of your spicy noodles, please, you said brightly, as you walked over to the table that the man was gesturing for you to sit at. Moichiro followed suit and sat down as well. No problem at all, the man said with a big smile, his smile making his eyes crinkle at the corners. And for you? He then asked, turning his attention to Moichiro. Um, food, uh... Moichiro hummed, looking up to his right and crossing his arms as he thought long and hard. He'll have the same, he said suddenly, feeling like you'd be there for at least the rest of the afternoon if you didn't step in. Well, that makes it easy then, doesn't it? The man said with another small chuckle. Give me about ten minutes. I'll be back. Thank you, you said happily, and watched the man walk away before looking at Moichiro, who was sitting across from you, his misty blue dull eyes just staring blankly at you. You okay? you asked. Not sounding caring at all, but more just a little annoyed with this guy at the moment. Um, I was just thinking that you look like a squirrel. You chat like one, and you like food, I think. Squirrels like food a lot, he said. You weren't expecting him to say something so random, and you almost took offence, but then covered it. I guess, he replied with a shrug. You remind me of any creature that has an empty mind. At first, you kind of froze for a second. You hadn't meant to come off as harsh as what you had, but he really was annoying you. That much was true. Well, it was more that you were annoyed that you wanted to be having a really jolly conversation with him, but you hadn't been getting anywhere, and he wasn't living up to what you'd hoped of him. That was the bee in your bonnet. What animal is that? He asked, just looking at you blankly. Dunno, you replied quickly, and then looked away. It's nice in here, warm. I guess, he replied, just aimlessly looking around. It's quiet in here too, actually, you said, only just now noticing that you and Moichiro were the only ones in there. Would more people be in here around this time? It's lunchtime, isn't it? You wondered. In a few more minutes, the man returned with two steaming bowls of ramen, and you thanked him and then asked your question. Hey, um, sorry if this is a strange question, but it's very quiet in here today. Is it usually quiet in your shop around this time? You asked. Oh, the man said, initially smiling, but then the smile fading a little, even though he tried to hold it. Um, we, uh, we had a, a, an incident about a week ago, and 
Now people are afraid to come in here and eat. What incident was that? You ask curiously, side glancing at Moichiro who had started eating his ramen. Oh, uh, well, you see, it was a dinner shift and we were about to close up. There were still two couples in the shop and a, a demon came in. I don't need to tell you what happened next, but when I came to check on them, they'd, they'd been... His voice faded and his gaze dropped to the floor. I'm sorry, he said after a second. It's still painful to speak about. Oh, I'm so sorry, he said empathetically. I didn't mean to ask such a traumatic question. It's okay, but since then no one's been coming back in, he said sadly. I have a wife and three little ones to feed. What am I supposed to do? Your heart strings pulled and you looked at Moichiro who was still eating his ramen. Are you enjoying your food? You asked him. He nodded with a mouthful. Then we should help this man, you said, then turned back to the men. Sir? We'll stay in your shop tonight, and if the demon comes, we'll take him out for you. Y you will? The man asked with surprise. But how? Who are you? We're demon slayers, he said with a smile. We were only meant to pass through tonight and keep going, but we can stay and help for one night. I, w I would be most grateful, the man said, and you could hear the gratitude in his voice. If I could prove that the demon had been taken care of, then people will come back to my shop and eat again. We'll do our best, sir, he said with a smile. Thank you. I'll let you eat and then we can talk later, he said with a genuine smile. You thanked him and then dug into your ramen, smiling to yourself while you ate. You were so into your food that you didn't notice Moichiro watching you from across the table. Yeah, like a squirrel, but more kind, he said, and you stopped and looked up at him, both cheeks filled with food. Hmm? You hummed through your mouthful. That night, you and Moichiro stayed in the shop. The owner insisted that he stay too, doing work in his office, but keeping all the lights on as if he were still serving customers, just like on that fateful night. The hours ticked by, and soon it was getting close to midnight. I don't think anything's going to come tonight, but this owner feels fairly certain that the demon's been waiting for another chance to strike, but hasn't had the opportunity because no one's come back, you thought, adjusting your seat and looking across into the dull eyes of Moichiro. Is there anything going on behind those eyes? You wondered as he watched his side profile. Suddenly he lifted his head a little and got to his feet, so you followed suit. Something's here, he said softly, and you looked towards the door. You couldn't see well into the darkness outside, but you too could feel something sinister lurking around in the dark, just outside of the dimmed lights from inside the restaurant. Just then a grotesque figure stepped into the shop, its red eyes gleaming in the semi-dark of the shop. Another couple, it hissed. I hate couples. They taste terrible. But they feel so good. I do believe this is where one would say, oh no, spaghetti O. Oh. We'll have to stay tuned for part three coming next week at the usual one shot time. I'll see you then.